I got to believe it's one thing taking a, a, a gumball machine into a barbershop, but it's a whole other thing to take a vending machine into a motel. What does right. that negotiation process look like? So when I approached the, the hotel, um, you know, they said they were interested. And then we had to have a sit down. I had to have a sit down with the manager and, you know, go over what we would come up with the uh, agreement. Uh, also known as the you know the contract. So at that point, I had this. I ain't had no contract. This your first contract? Yeah. So I had to scrape up a contract, and I ended up talking to the guy who was helping me, um, who I was getting the machine from. You know, he gave me some advice. I contacted a um, a lawyer friend that I had, and he helped me put together a contract. So I approached them with the contract. Um, we talked about like price points, the type of products that would be in there, so on and so forth. We came to an agreement. And then at that point, when they signed the contract, I, you know, we brought the machine in. Couple of questions for you. You get this contract. What's in it? Like, is it percentage? I'm gonna give you X amount of dollars that I make off this um, particular spot. Mm -hmm. Are we talking damages? Cause obviously it's a motel, people can damage. Like what, typically what should people have in a vending machine contract when negotiating with a location. Yeah, you you just hit the nail on the head. So sometimes, not all the time, you have to pay a commission, right? So you wanna, the commission should be in there if you're paying it or not paying it. Um, who's liable for damages will be in there, which most of the time we're liable. Like, so we have, we and we just cover that with insurance. We have insurance on the machines. Um, you also wanna have term as far as like how long is this agreement good for it? So most of the time we'll try to get it to start with on a, um, a two year contract. Uh, so at least we're in there for at least two years. Um, and then also you're gonna have on there, this is not this is not every time, but sometimes people like, um, if something does, like if, if damages do happen to the machine or if it's not working, how, how much time do you have to fix it? So we usually give ourselves um, a week to come out and, you know, make repairs. Um, and then also, depending on the location, they might want uh, the price points in there as well in the, in the negotiation. What do you mean the price points? For the price points for the product. So let's say we come down and we agree on the prices. Sometimes they wanted, uh, they want, before before you change the prices, let's say, uh, let's say the uh, prices on Pepsi, this is actually, this actually happened. The prices on the, uh, all the Pepsi, uh, not not all the Pepsi, all of the sugar products in Philly went up because they had we 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 inherited what we call like a sugar tax. Mm -hmm. So every day and it went up by the ounce. So every ounce of sugar it was taxed by like ten cents or something crazy. So at that point we had to change the prices, uh, the the, uh, the beverages and stuff like so. A lot of people want um want to be notified before the prices are increased past. So the locations themselves actually want to be notified before you raise the prices on your vending machines? Yeah, because if we if we agree on a price, it's like, all right, well, let us know if that price has to be changed for whatever reason. Like, so, you know. We, so we, are they more worried about, and, and I'm sorry for, for, for jumping in here, are they more oh. worried about getting their PC or are they saying, look, we want to keep these prices level for our customer base, for the for the people who are walking in and out of here? All right. So most of the time we know with vending machines, man, it's like people think, um, a lot of people think you have to pay commission and whatnot because the people are like, oh, well, you're using that electricity or you're doing this, you're doing that. Most of the time, those locations just want your service. They just want a good service for that, either for their employees or for their customers. So that's like their main focus, even with the prices and everything like that. They just want a fair price for their employees or for their customers. Like they're not really even focused on commission like nine times out of 10. Gotcha. You said insurance. I never, I guess I never even thought about this. There's a such thing as insurance for vending machines? Yeah, yeah, you can get business insurance and get your machines covered. So anytime any type of uh, property damage happens, yeah, they're, they're covered. They replace it for the amount of the uh, for the volume of the machine. 
How often did you have to use this insurance? Once. Just and that once. Was on, and that was on my first location because that place got shut down. So when they, when they got shut down, it was like, you know, they, they was acting crazy in there and bust up the machine. Okay. So for anybody who is watching this, you would recommend get insurance on your machines? Yeah, most definitely. Is it reasonable? Yeah, it's reasonable. It's, it's really not expensive, uh, expensive at all. I mean, if you got a few machines, it might be like $100 a year. Like, it's not, it's okay. not a lot. Yeah. Not bad. Talk to me. Now you're getting into the vending machine business. That mm -hmm. first location, before we go into any of your other locations, before we go into you buying more machines, that first location, did you make good money on it? What made you decide, you know what, I should get out of these gumball machines and get into vending machines moving forward? I would say on that, on that first location, um, let's say where I was doing $50 a month with a, with a solid like gumball machine, and that first two weeks with my vending machine was a soda machine at that time. I did I did like fifty dollars. So I'm like, all right, well if I did fifty dollars in this first two weeks in a month, you know, I do a hundred, which is double what I'm getting off for the uh, the uh the candy machine. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, I keep doing it. But within I would say two or three months of me being at that spot, like it went from like fifty in two weeks to a like a couple hundred in two weeks to whereas though by the end of the month, by the end of that third month, it was doing like 700 on that soda machine for that month. Are we talking gross or net? Talking gross. So it was, it was gross and like 700 um, a month just off of that one machine. One machine. So typically when you're in the gumball industry, you're doing literally $50 a month. Right. And, 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 it, was, and, it, was, and it was cash. Like, so that's another thing that I like because it was, the coins would made it, it. It was difficult to carry those coins. Like they kept busting up like my bags. <laughs> you got, they got a thousand dollars in coins, and I'm going to a bank. When I would only use the banks with the uh, coin counters, and I put the coins in there, and it's jamming up, and it's you know it was a lot. I did it, but it, you know it wasn't it wasn't nothing crazy. But it was it was much easier to deal with the dollar bills than it was to deal with all that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was another plus for me. Okay, you said you said, and then I'm gonna move the interview forward. You said you were making about seven hundred dollars cash per month, one location, on average. And this is a a, a a soda machine, correct? Yeah, that was a soda machine. How much in terms of dollars does it take to fill one of those machines for the month? Soda machine took me ninety dollars to fill up. You said what? It took me ninety dollars to fill up the soda machine because let's say you got a. Uh, it has it had ten selections, so and it was all cans, all can sodas, and it was one bottle, one roll for bottle of water. So the the water might have cost me like five dollars for a case, um, and all the all the cases of soda, which they come in cases of thirty six, was about uh, ten dollars a piece. So you got about is it like nine like ninety five dollars to fill up? It was under a hundred. So your net profit is six oh six hundred dollars, six hundred and ten dollars. No, 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 no. Because I would still have to. So once that sold out, let's say, all right, I put a case of thirty six, then I put a, you know, and then that sold out, right? So that week, so the, so that's another thing. The vending machines I filled up every week. Oh, so it's gotcha. Like, it's, it's not like the candy machines where I just go monthly. I had to go weekly and fill them up every week. So every week I was just selling. It was selling out basically. Okay, nice. So now you're thinking to yourself, I really got to move forward with this vending machine thing. Yeah, so I ended up putting a second machine in there. I put a snack machine in there. Same motel? Same motel. And it was funny because the guy told me not to. Like, the guy got the soda machine told me not to. He said, yeah, nobody really buys snacks like that. I'm like, man, it's doing good, though. I think, you know, I want to try to get a snack machine in there. So I ended up, ended up going for it, and the snack machine did the same exact thing. So both of them together was doing like, you know, 1400. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.